What is up everyone? Welcome back to yet another video on mass fashion trends. Today we are taking a closer look at the biggest mass fashion trends from fall winter 23 runways. These trends are already in the game and will be even more so in the upcoming fall winter. All right, before jumping in, let's look back and recap a few major changes and updates. Now, the previous season was all about biker jackets, suits without shirts, purple tones, Y2K aesthetic and western style. Well, those trends more or less still here, this time with few updates and tweaks. When it comes to new trends, there are plenty. This season, designers want us to look like Doctor Strange from Marvel and Neo from the Matrix movie. So they came up with super long overcoats and capes. Furthermore, designers leveled up their accessories game significantly. Following to runways were packed with extra large bags and leather gloves. All right, without further ado, here are the biggest fashion trends for fall winter 2023-24. If you suddenly decided to become a magician or superhero, you are not alone. Designers felt this urge too, so they went ahead and sent a wide range of capes and cape-inspired clothing down the runway. Edric Owens, the designer, unveiled three types of capes. First two types were more or less similar in terms of length and shape. They clenched to the chest and then went swinging free. Other types of capes look shorter and more voluminous. They did look like capes women wore in Victorian era in Britain. The magic and mystic feel of those looks were intensified by black paint stripes across the model's eyes and cheeks. Similar to Rick Owens, capes at Dolce & Gabbana came with a mystical and magical touch. Here models dressed in long capes look like super villains from anime movies. This trend gets more playful and fun at Fendi. Here capes came in the spirit of nightlife and 70s disco. Fringed capes and ponchos were everywhere on the runway. Sylvia Fendi went even farther and applied this trend to the Fendi tailoring. She transformed two-piece suits into three-piece by adding a cape into the equation. Here cape was reimagined as a single shoulder cape and sometimes as a skirt cape, often tied around the model's waist. At Kenzo, the Japanese designer Nigo sent out varsity capes. As the name suggests, this piece looked like a hybrid of a cape and a varsity jacket. This trend was also spotted at the Simiaki show. Here capes and ponchos came with pleated details. They also featured an asymmetrical zip closure at front and two slits. These details added more texture and functionality to the garment. Seemingly, you can navigate your hands to the pockets through the slits. At Dior, Kim Jones presented cape-inspired sweaters. Other knits were slit at the sleeves and hung off the arms like a cape. There were also one-shoulder knits which in a way resembled cloaks worn by military commanders in ancient Rome. Lastly, this trend gets super cozy at Burberry. Here capes were reimagined as blanket capes worn casually thrown over model shoulders. If you like one and done outfits that take almost no effort but still look on point, you are in luck. Jumpsuits are, again, back in style. They are functional, practical and they are one-piece silhouette and all-in-one garment create a stylish look. Jumpsuits at Gucci came massively oversized. They featured a snap button closure at front and also on both sides of the legs. At Etro, Marco De Vincenzo presented a series of jumpsuits with retro allure. They came with various interesting patterns, including Etro's most recognizable paisley pattern. Others featured a stripe pattern and came with single pocket detail. Jumpsuits came with retro allure at Casablanca. They were highly inspired by a pilot uniform. Here the show was dedicated to peace and there was a Syrian fighter jet in the back decorated with flowers. 
At Kenzo, Nigo sends the work we are inspired, then overalls, down the runway. This collection marked his third chapter as a creative director at Kenzo. We already see here his ideas and style more forcefully into the picture. Jumpsuits had their moment also at Givenchy. They came in many different colors and fabrics, even in faux python leather. Styling was done in a manner that only bottom half was worn and the top acted as a skirt at the back. Here looks like Matthew Williams referenced an archival photo of Hubert de Givenchy, the founder of the house, wearing a sweater tied around his waist. At Saint Laurent, Anthony Vaccarello presented a super original piece. Here this trend is reimagined as a trench coat cut into the shape of a jumpsuit. Last but not least, let's have a look at Rick Owens. Here the designer favored oversized jumpsuits. They were used as undergarments styled with duet donuts and parka coats. This season, designers want us to feel super powerful and special, so they came up with super long overcoats that would make a wearer feel just like Neo from the Matrix movie. Super long overcoats were hands down the biggest obsession on the fall winter runways. Almost every menswear designer experimented with it and presented their take. At some point, it felt like a competition among the designers over the longest and coolest overcoat. At Gucci, the brand's in-house design team unveiled a series of strikingly impressive overcoats with lengths finishing below the ankles. Others went even longer with hems dragging on the floor. At Dolce & Gabbana, the designer duo took on this trend with super long overcoats in volcanic black. Here they experimented a lot with shapes and silhouettes and explored everything from oversized and relaxed to slender and waist accentuated. The obsession continues farther on the Fendi runway. The designer presented her killer contenders for the competition. Here double-breasted overcoats came with a satin lapel like a tuxedo jacket. Others were elevated with tiny letters that resembled metal studs. It was all about leather at Bottega. Here Matthew Blazy sent out leather trench coats in hourglass silhouette. Prada takes on the strand with a long and slender overcoat. They came with leather panels over the shoulders, resembling a donkey jacket. Other super long outwear included hooded parkas and duffel coats. At J.W. Anderson, the Irish designer sent out his contenders for the Matrix coat competition. His uniform-like duffel coats came in leather fastened with lock and key. Others came in a slender silhouette, wide at the shoulders and narrow at the foot, elongated the entire way down the body. When it comes to length, looks like Jonathan Anderson leveled up his game at Loewe. Compared to the overcoats from his namesake label, here at Loewe they went longer and also they featured a shorter lapel opening. This trend was massive at St. Laurent. The runway was populated with slender and super long outwear. Here Anthony Vaccarello experimented a lot with genderless silhouettes and various interesting shapes. Matrix coats at Kenzo came with a Japanese twist. Here kimono inspired coats were everywhere on the runway. At Driswa Norton, the Belgian designer sent out a killer contender. A double-breasted greatcoat with slightly exaggerated shoulders and almost all-time Hollywood moister waist. Looking at Jill Zander, super long and oversized overcoats dominated the runway. The designer duo behind the brand, Lucien Lugmeyer, paid tribute to the brand's DNA by sending out a lot of monochromatic and minimalistic looks. They also sent out a bunch where the designers threw their own style and perspective into the picture. Similar to Jill Zander, overcoats looked massively oversized at Ed Manor. They came with hulking shoulders and with elongated and tapered silhouette. Color purple once again is having its moment. 
In fact, it's the color of the year according to the American color chart Pantone. Anyways, looking at fall winter runways, purple as well as shades of purple such as lilac and violet are the choice of colors for many designers. Alright, Rick Owens, the designer known for his muted and dark palette, still continues to use purple in his collections. If it was a jaw-dropping surprise last season, this time it seemed not that big of a deal. Looks like Rick Owens keeps challenging himself and enjoys the process very much. This trend was also spotted at Fendi. Purple and lilac were everywhere on the runway. Here we see clearly how purple can provide an extra touch of boldness and playful vibes. Edris Van Norton, the Belgian designer, sent out purple cargo pants with multiple pockets and straps. There was also a purple blazer with square shoulders and nipped in waist. Purple tones were seen also at Burberry. It was Daniel Lee's first debut collection after replacing Ricardo Tisci. Here purple was featured in a series of plaid suits and knits. Just like Daniel Lee, Marco De Vincenzo debuted his first menswear show at Etro. The runway was splashed with various tones of purple. We saw purple knits with kinetic patterns and swirling motifs that the designer loved so much. There were 70s inspired tailored suits also, done in strikingly impressive purple tartan. Purple tones dominated the runway also at Kiko Constantino. Here the Bulgarian designer experimented a lot with silhouettes and paired them with vibrant colors. He sent out a series of looks in utilitarian accents splashed with various tones of purple. Last but not least, at JW Anderson, we saw a highly impressive leather outfit with black pants, wrestling shoes and a purple biker jacket. The fall winter 23 is a season of experimentation. Especially, shoulders have been a particular area of interest. It's no secret that designers have been obsessed with power shoulders for a while now. This time, they decided to extend their obsession to sloped shoulders. So, if anyone is already kind of bored of power shoulders, you can try out sloping shoulders. Sloping shoulders are characterized with built-up neck and dropped shoulder line. This trend was literally everywhere on the fall winter runways. At Dolce & Gabbana, sloping shoulders were seen in a series of outwear such as blazers, leather jackets and even shillings. At Gucci, sloping shoulders appeared on massively oversized knitwear that came with cutout details. There were also coats with sloped shoulders, styled effortlessly with a net sweater and flared pants in denim. Ed Maynor experimented a lot with various shapes and silhouettes. The runway was packed with oversized dropped shoulder outwear. The designer explained backstage that this collection was all about working on different treatments and making clothes look like they were found somewhere. Not necessarily like a designer product, but something that you accidentally found and you were happy to discover it. Similar to at the Manor, sloping shoulders dominated the runway at Loewe. Here clothes were crafted from copper and steel. One of the show highlights here, the standaway structured coats were molded by hat makers. They featured a high neckline and dropped shoulders. At Dior, Kim Jones presented a series of short sleeve hooded parkas with sloping shoulders, which also resembled lifeguard inspired jackets. The sloping shoulder trend went extreme at Balenciaga. Here leather jackets came with an extremely built-up neckline and dropped shoulders. They were followed by a series of looks inspired by cyber loungewear. Surprisingly, most of the looks in this collection were wiped clean of Balenciaga logos. Last but not least, Xenia unveiled a wide array of looks with sloping shoulders. Here leather jackets and heavy v-neck sweaters featured a built-up neckline and dropped shoulders. A fall winter season staple, Shilling, comes back 
on four meter runways. Shilling is a real sheepskin that usually has a suede surface on one side and a clip fur on the other. Functionality wise, nothing beats the warmth and comfort of shilling. This season, designers have been super creative when it comes to this trend. At Dolce & Gabbana, the designers presented a wide array of shilling outwear in different shapes and silhouettes. Here models walk the runway looking like popular characters from the TV show Game of Thrones. At Dior, shilling jackets came with tanned color and offset zip closure. They were styled with highly impressive kilts and tall socks, picking over models' boots. The shilling trend was particularly big at Givenchy. The runway was packed with shilling clothing. Here, shilling hoodies were styled with workwear pants. Shilling bummer jackets, on the other hand, were styled with jumpsuits and aviation-inspired pants. Nigo unveiled super attractive shilling jackets at Kenzo. They were styled with kimono pants and accessorized with yellow gloves. At Giorgio Armani, shilling outwear came in dark brown. They were heavily accessorized with wide brim hats, gloves and shades. Here models looked like they were coming back from military service or country weekends or something similar. Shilling jackets looked massively oversized at Ed Maynor. Here the designer came up with super interesting silhouettes. He experimented a lot with sloped shoulders and with highly exaggerated shapes. At JW Anderson, the Irish designer unveiled highly attractive shilling jackets. Here model's faces were covered with paint and swirly patterns. Looks like Jonathan Anderson continues to explore modern surrealism that has been capturing his attention in recent years. At Rick Owens, shilling coats came with hoods. They were styled with nylon jumpsuits and accessorized with super chic handbags. Shilling trend was particularly big at Lanwin. Just recently, the French fashion house announced that its creative director, Bruno Cialelli, is set to depart and the label is gonna focus more on luxury leather goods and accessories. Men's skirts are certainly nothing new. They have been around for a while now. This season, the popularity of men's skirts reached a whole new level. Once again, with this trend, designers try to liberate men and give them an option to select clothes that simply resonates with their personality. At Dior, Kim Jones unveiled a wide range of tweed kilts. They came styled with mid calf high socks, picking over leather boots. With this collection, Kim Jones tried to capture a continuous change and movement in Dior's history, in particular the era after the death of Monsieur Dior and its rejuvenation with In Salaro, his chosen heir. At Gucci, skirts go longer and grungier. We see here Gucci design team experimenting with grungy accents and retro style. Gucci skirts featured a front slit detail and they were styled with loose socks and furry loafers, giving the whole outfit that effortless, stylish vibe. Compared to Gucci, skirts at Fendi looked more elegant and chic. In fact, they were more like skirt capes, highly inspired by nightlife and 70s disco. At Givenchy, men's skirts were highly influenced by workwear. Here, skirts are reimagined as shorts with inner slits on both sides. This bold and daring collection from Matthew Williams explored everything from classic tailoring to streetwear. When it comes to men's skirts, the biggest and best selection was found at Rick Owens. The runway was populated with black, below the knee skirts, styled with new edition of Kiss boots. Another take on men's skirts included denim midi A-line skirts featuring a shredded and frayed hem. Others were lengthier, totally stained. As Rick explained, these skirts are in 18 ounce Japanese indigo selvage denim. At Jill Zander, skirts over pants ruled the runway. Those minimalist and monochromatic outfits resembled three-piece futuristic uniforms. The designer duo further elevated the looks by introducing handbags and chunky necklaces into the outfits, giving those looks a glamorous spin. 
At that row, Marco De Vincenzo unveiled a wide array of long kills in various patterns, mostly tartan. Using tartan fabric was a nod from the designer to the Etro's legacy and roots. Here, tartan kilts are styled with riveted platform shoes and loose mid-calf high socks. Skirt strand infiltrated the runway also at Y Project. Here all denim outfits featured rectangular denim panels attached to the jacket and pants with snap buttons, giving the illusion that the models were wearing skirts over denim pants. Ed Maynard tweaked the classics by turning traditionally tailored outwear into a crop jacket and skirt combo. This collection was full of interesting pieces and the construction of the silhouettes was super amazing. At Kiko Konstantinov, skirts get more feminine and colorful. The Bulgarian designer explained backstage that in terms of inspiration, he imagined a group of schoolboys who were invited to create collection for themselves, but whose research material was based on four unsung influences from the women's wear design. Last but not least, let's have a look at Comme des Garçons Homme Plus. Here the asymmetrical black skirts were combined with a cape-looking tops with extremely wide and pointy shoulders. Furthermore, we saw a series of looks in checked pattern that cloaked the arms and featured extra limbs. Here once again we see a legend, Rei Kawakubo, disrupting the notion of tailoring and its conventional anatomy. Oversized bags are one of the most practical trends from fall to runways. Its popularity started in women's fashion and now it has reached also to menswear. Looking at fall to runways, menswear designers give the okay to any kind of bag as long as it's oversized. Especially traditional style bags are in style, such as totes, hobos, clutches, messenger bags and they are augmented to extra large size. The popularity of oversized bags can be attributed also to their practicality and functionality. Simply, you have more room to carry your belongings. Anyways, looking at Bottega, oversized totes and clutch bags were everywhere. A lot of looks here were accessorized with basket bags in knitted leather, often worn on the back and sometimes carried by hand. At Etro, models carried oversized tote bags folded under the arm like a clutch. They were adorned with various geometric patterns, including Marco De Vincenzo's favorite kinetic patterns. Others came with impressive floral prints and 3D embroidery. At Fendi, we saw a wide range of oversized bags, in particular, shopper bags, totes, and travel bags. They were often accessorized with cozy blankets placed on top between the handles. After the strong debut last season, Maximilian Davis brings fresh energy to Ferragamo once again. Here, no doubt, bags were a huge moment, in particular, massively oversized tote bags. Models carried them by hand and sometimes under the arm like a clutch. At Hermes, Veronique Nishanian, the longest standing creative director in all of fashion, offered the brand's rich customers a wide selection of extra large bags. They were done in a variety of seductive fabrications, crocodile leather, fjord cowhide, and togo calfskin. This trend went to extreme at Loewe. Jonathan Anderson sent out massively oversized leather tote bags. They looked so large, you could fit all of your stuff plus your pets. At Jill Zander, oversized bags were a huge moment throughout the show. Here, tote bags came in matte leather and canvas. Those looks certainly blurred the boundaries between sportswear and tailoring, as well as between the elongated and voluminous. Last but not least, oversized bags were everywhere at Versace. The runway was packed with elegant tote bags and weekender bags. The show was staged in LA and the collection was inspired by Hollywood's history of red carpet fashion. Double-breasted blazers have been around in the game for a while now and looks like they are going nowhere anytime soon. This trend should not be confused with the suit trend. 
This one is all about wearing a blazer as a separate piece. Even if you are casually dressed up, you can spice things up by simply throwing on a blazer. Alright, this trend was particularly big in terms of tuxedo jackets. For instance, as seen at Givenchy, here double-breasted tuxedo jackets are worn with super casual pieces like distress hoodies and jersey skirts. At Dolce & Gabbana, double-breasted blazers looked massively oversized. They were styled with skinny sweatpants and knee-high leather boots. At Giorgio Armani, double-breasted blazers came in grey hues, with a lot of zigzag textures and geometric reading. The inspiration here comes from the architecture of Milan. At Ed Maynard, the designer sent oversized blazers down the runway. Some of them came super cropped, styled with blue denim and white shirt. Others looked lengthier, paired with men's skirts. Similar to Ed Maynard at Gucci, double-breasted blazers were worn with men's skirts. At Louis Vuitton, double-breasted jackets were worn casually, thrown over the shoulders. Even though models' hands were hidden, they still carried handbags. Anyways, looks like over-the-shoulder jackets can make one's outfit super interesting and unique. Lastly, double-breasted blazers were seen also at Yoji Yamamoto. Here blazers came in shrunken shape and looked heavily strapped. Tunics were everywhere on the fall winter runways. It is one of those trends that creeped into menswear from women's wear. Anyways, tunics have been around since ancient times. They were originally used by Roman soldiers as part of a military uniform. This season, menswear designers take this interesting and original garment and return it to menswear. At Bottega, Messiu Blazy tried to reconnect Italy through its history. He even loaned statues and Roman bronzes from museums. Here, super long, neat tunics dominated the runway. They were styled in an elegant way over the shirt and the tie combo. Tunics looked super interesting at Kiko Constantino. Here, the designer presented cape shoulder tunics, highly influenced by women's wear. Tunics at Dior had a certain meaning. Those over the head grey tunics were references to St. Lawrence time at Dior. In a way, it's really easy to spot this. Fabric is Dior and the silhouette is from Insularo. Kim Jones further elevated the looks with modern wellies and fisherman hats. At J.W. Anderson, we saw the strand as t-shirt tunics. Models walked the runway half-naked with white pillows tucked under the arms. Jonathan Anderson presented tunics also in his second collection, this time for Loewe. Here tunics resembled coats with front, wicked opening and lapel detail. At Saint Laurent and Sony Vaccarello came up with high neck tunics. They went super long and featured a high stand collar. The designer used those pieces as a statement that gender in fashion can be relevant. At Prada, suede tunics were everywhere. Here the designers tried to simultaneously transmit minimalism and functionality along with style. Prada tunics resembled high-end corporate uniforms often used in the hospitality industry. At and Demule Mister Ludovic de Sanson sent beautiful dress tunics down the runway. They featured a deep plunging neckline and they were accessorized with oversized fluffy bags. Tunics were spotted also at Rick Owens. Here sleeveless tunics came with inserted panels in various geometrical shapes. This season, almost every menswear designer put plaids at the heart of their collections. From tartan and guineum to grid and buffalo check, plaid patterns were everywhere on the runways. At Gucci, Plaids came with grungy accents. Here Gucci models looked effortlessly put together in long tartan kilts and plaid suits. Plaids were particularly big at Burberry. Daniel Lee, who recently replaced Ricardo Tesci, tried to bring out the Britishness of the brand. Here the runway was packed with various plaid patterns, including the brand's signature Burberry checks. At Tetro, tartan kilts and suits were everywhere. Here, using tartan fabric, 
was a nod from Marco De Vincenzo to Etro's legacy and roots. In addition to tartans, the designer used a lot of checkered patterns. At Comte de Garçon, plaids were everywhere. The designer called this collection tailoring of the avant-garde, presenting highly impressive plaid suits that came elevated farther with experimental headwear. Plaid patterns were spotted also at Discord. Here Kate and Brothers put an amazing show on display. A lot of looks here were done in Y2K aesthetic and they also channeled Western style. At Giorgio Armani, richly textured wools and cashmeres were everywhere. Here the designer sent out double-breasted blazers in window pane and Prince of Wales checks. Plaids dominated the runway also at Kenzo. Particular highlights here were plaid suits that came in retro allure. This collection felt like English country couture played against Japanese tailoring and mixed with American workwear. Plaids were seen also at Givenchy. Here Matthew Williams unveiled super divers and original looks full of references across punk and workwear. His models walked the runway with cascading layers of reimagined staples. Last but not least, plaid patterns were spotted also at Yoji Yamamoto. Looks like the designer, now at 79, still feels he has many horizons yet to explore. Bummer jackets for fall winter. Super nice, but nothing revolutionary. Well, this season their popularity reached a new peak. Fall winter runways were populated with bummer jackets in various shapes and styles, ranging from clean and classic to wild and loud. This trend was particularly big at Rick Owens. The designer sent out a wide range of bummer jackets, channeling his unique and avant garde style. Highly muscular bummer jackets came cropped in above the waist lengths. Others came in nylon and featured Rick Owens' signature split zip hood. There were yet another type of bummer jackets, lengthier version, with spiked shoulders, made from heavyweight and unshaven cowhides. Bummer jackets were the biggest highlights also at Riswa Noten. Here the Belgian designer presented bummer jackets highly influenced by 90s rape culture. They featured botanical prints that, according to designer, were inspired by works of Alexander von Humboldt, a German geographer and naturalist, and the man credited with having invented the concept of ecology. At Gucci, bummer jackets came with oversized arms and dropped shoulders. Others were done in less exaggerated shapes, styled with sweatpants and accessorized with oversized shoulder bag. Bummer jackets at Kenzo were made from denim. They were accessorized with a lot of brooches and pins. At Prada, the designer duo sent out pillow-inspired bummer jackets. By the way, show invitations that Prada sent to the guests were actual white pillows. Pillow bummer jackets were followed with minimalist bummer jackets constructed from rugged nylon. They resembled jackets used by Air Force pilots in the 60s. Leather glove trend has come totally out of nowhere. It has been a big trend for women's wear and looks like the designers have decided to try this also in men's wear. Anyways, leather gloves are here and we better not to overlook this trend. They are super stylish as well as functional accessories. And if we do this right, they can easily take a look from good to great. Leather gloves were must-have accessories at Dolce & Gabbana. The designer duo envisioned this collection as if it were a photo in black and white. Timeless and eternal without any chromatic vehemence. Looks like with leather gloves, designers gave this beautiful collection a glamorous spin. This trend was super big at Giorgio Armani. Here the inspiration came from the architecture of Milan. Seemingly the designer used leather gloves as statement accessories to underline the elegance and class. Leather gloves were particularly big at Versace. Here it was all about glamour and power of Hollywood. Versace gloves 
came in glassy finish with metal hardware detail. Etric Owens leather gloves made sense, since the collection was influenced by 19th century Victorian era. Here are the biggest highlights, long upper gloves came with hidden pockets and zipper detail. Similar to Rick Owens, we saw a lot of opera style gloves at Louis Vuitton. A particular highlight here was the one with lace-up detail. Leather gloves were everywhere at Jill Zander. Designers used them a lot to accessorize suits and overcoats. Furthermore, we saw padded gloves featured in biker uniforms. Lastly, at Yoji Yamamoto, we saw a highly impressive gloves in blue leather. Seemingly, gloves are perfect accessories to add a pop of color and make an outfit look more fun. This season, cardigans are coming back in full force, becoming one of the most important items in menswear. Now, a cardigan is a great fashion item due to its versatility and ability to suit a wide variety of looks. It can be worn with both casual and classic outfits and can be used as a toned down piece in terms of formality. Well, if you are after the best cardigans, head to Prada. Here the designer duo sent out a wide range of minimalist looks featuring cardigans worn on a naked body. Just like the Prada suiting, cardigans here included detachable 70s inspired colors. At MSGM, varsity cardigans were everywhere. They were highly inspired by 90s preppy style. At Loewe, Jonathan Anderson presented a purple cardigan accessorized with a loop scarf in fleece. At Dior, round neck cardigans came in sky blue. They had both Dior sensuality and elegance. Cardigans were spotted also at Hermes. They were styled with turnecks with tone on tone layering. Lastly, let's head to Xenia. Here, Alessandro Sartori put a wide array of cardigans on display. This collection was super important for the brand. It was crafted with cashmere fibers that the fashion house is committed to certify as 100% traceable by 2024. Clearly, it's a big step from Xenia in promoting sustainable fashion. Last season, suits without shirts ruled the runways. Well, this season, the obsession with suits got even bigger and reached a new peak. This time, designers did not shy away to deconstruct suits and heavily experiment with many different shapes and silhouettes. As seen on Formula runways, almost every major designer put their twist and presented their take on suits. At Balenciaga, oversized tailoring looks were everywhere. Here, suit jackets were constructed from reverse tailored pants and featured pant loops and pockets in the hem. And below them hung extra pair of pants, which gave the illusion that the models were walking on four legs. Show notes explained that the tailoring segment was inspired by Demna's earliest memory as a child in Georgia. He went to a neighboring tailor twice for fittings to get a perfect pair of pants. At Dolce & Gabbana, the designer duo favored the suits with hourglass suit jackets. They explained that usually it's a masculine construction that is applied to women's jackets, but this time they did the opposite. They took a jacket tailored for a woman and worked hard to beautifully fit a man's body. They worked with their artisans and they came up with such incredibly sculpted shapes that they were amazed themselves. At Dior, Kim Jones presented his signature tailoring. Well, during his tenure at Dior, we saw the evolution of his distinctively tailored suits, minimalist and lapelless with flowing pants. It has both Dior's captivating sensitivity and elegance. This time, the designer added some more tweaks, such as detachable and drawstring adjustable sleeves. At Gucci, tailoring was super chill and comfy. Elongated, double-breasted suit jackets were worn shirtless or laid atop white t-shirts with deep scoop neckline. 
Gucci suits here feature detachable sleeves and legs. They added more dimension and sense of functionality. Looking at Prada, tailoring here was super crisp and elegant. Designers added some useful personality with detachable color that was 70s inspired and came in various bright tones. The designer duo did not stop there and unveiled their yet another take on suiting. This time they threw futuristic tailoring into the picture. Suit jackets here were designed and styled like shirts and worn tucked in. Those looks were accessorized with tote bags which seemingly contained water bottles. Et and the Mule Mister Ludovic de Sanson paid a tribute to the brand's heritage and roots. His models wore suits in signature de Mule Mister style with undone shirts and with their cuffs visible, extending a few inches past the jackets. Those glistening shirts were tied effortlessly at the waist. Looking at yet another Belgian fashion house, Driso Anotum, suits here were done in oversized silhouette with super elongated double-breasted jackets that featured also power shoulders. Driso Anotum unveiled his yet another take on tailoring. This time it was made up with a slimmer jacket and flowing pants. These waist accentuated suits with strong shoulders had a subtle retro allure and a masculine swagger. At Fendi, tailoring looked super cool and chic. It was done in the spirit of nightlife and 70s disco. Suits here were adorned by small letters made out of metal that resembled studs. The coolest detail here was a single shoulder cape that added more dimension and playful vibes to the Fendi suits. Those capes were also worn tied around the waist. That gave the illusion that the models were wearing a skirt. 70s theme was also present at Etro. Here Marco De Vincenzo unveiled a wide range of 70s inspired double-breasted suits. Vibe here was super chill and comfy with retro charm and swagger. Anyways guys, suits here were done in elongated 70s silhouette and cut in strikingly impressive tartans. At Ferragamo, Maximilian Davis went even beyond 70s. He reimagined the 50s Hollywood style through the lenses of modernity. Elongated suit jackets here featured a high lapel and slightly nipped-in waist. The designer elevated his tailoring with modern tweaks, such as two slits at front that revealed flashes of color. At Giorgio Armani, tailoring was done in the military slash utilitarian style. Here, Mr. Armani's three-piece suits still offered a sharp aesthetic and at the same time avoided looking overdone. There were also two-piece suits done similarly in utilitarian aesthetic. A suit jacket here is reimagined as a double-breasted jacket with four pairs of buttons and a drawstring hood. At Givenchy, Matthew Williams presented sharp suits with clean silhouettes. These beautiful waist accentuated suits featured squared off power shoulders. Styling was done in an elegant manner with turtlenecks and gloves. According to the designer, those fine black suits had been crafted in conjunction with Givenchy's couture atelier. Ed Maynor presented tailoring which this time looked more fitted and feminized than usual. His suits were constructed with a shrunken nipped waist jacket and flowy crop pants. Last but not least, at Xenia, Alessandro Sartori presented his signature soft suiting. This time, suit jackets were cut in an elongated shape and featured cropped sleeves. These contemporary menswear uniforms were super wearable, also fit for relaxing in, taking business and doing everything in between. Again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the fall winter trends and got something out of it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.